Hello everyone this is a start to my what ifs, I don't know how well it will be, but here goes this is what if Naruto was trained by Anko, also this fanfic is by Dragon6 now let's start the Naruto walked the streets of Kanoagakure no Sato in a dejected mood. His shoulders were slumped and his face had a frown on it. Why was he so down? He had just failed the Genin exams again. It was because of that stupid Bunshin again that made him fail. Why did that Jutsu always make him fail? He watched his families congratulated their children and it made him sad. It also did not help that everyone was making comments, glad that he failed again. It was just the usual things that he went through. He never understood why everyone hated him. He admitted that his pranks were outrageous but they were just because people could not ignore him. It was fun that he got such attention despite that he was getting negative feedback. He didn't get it but he always kept that happy disposition of his. He knew that one day, he would get their acknowledgement without having to resort to his pranks. He was going to be hockage after all. As he walked, feeling a bit better, he came across a small crowd of women. He was curious and decided to see what was going on. He watched as they glared at another woman. Naruto looked at the person that they were glaring at and was amazed at what she was doing. She currently had a kunoichi and a painful wrist lock while munching on some dango. He listened into the conversation. You bitch, the kunoichi growled, wincing in pain. I don't understand why you're so angry. I didn't tell your boyfriend to cheat on you. If it is anything, he was really bad at it. The woman said. The kunoichi growled some more but was forced to give up. She released her and sat back eating her dango. The kunoichi just glared at her before leaving. I can't believe that bitch. One of the women said. How can the sandami allow her to be a ninja? She's the student of a traitor. Another woman said. She's just as dangerous as the demon, brat. Another woman said, shush, she'll kill us if we talk about that. The woman left the area and Naruto was left to his thoughts. He wondered who this woman was. It looked like she was just as hated as he was. He decided to go and see the old man about it. Chapter 1 Naruto was making his way toward the Hockage Tower to see the old man. Last night, he could not forget about that woman he saw yesterday. She seems to be hated just like him but she didn't let it bother her. He would smile through the pain but that didn't really stop the glares and the words. That woman just took it all and even fought back at her tormentors. He had to know how she did it. He hoped that the old man would know who that woman was. He entered the tower without any problems as it was the only place besides Ichirakus that didn't hate him. He spoke to the receptionist who smiled and allowed him into the office of the hockage. As he entered, he watched the old man work for a while. The old man was the leader of Kanoa and the man that he would take the hat from soon. He was the Sandami Hokage, Sarutobi Haruzan. The aged leader looked up and smiled at him. Naruto, it is a pleasure to see you again. I'm sorry that I was not able to see you yesterday. I am also sorry that you did not pass this time. Haruzan said, don't sweat old man. I'll pass next year and then nothing will stop me in my quest for your hat. Naruto boasted. Haruzan just smiled and was pleased that Naruto could look at things with such optimism. Anyway, I was wondering if you can help me find a kunoichi. Naruto, I can't make Sakura like you. That is beyond my power. Haruzan said with a sigh. Not Sakura-chan, I'm looked for an older woman. I want to ask her a question. Naruto said. Haruzan was interested in who this woman was. Can you describe this woman? He asked. Well, she has violet hair in a short ponytail and light brown eyes. She was wearing a pair of shin guards, a mesh suit, a mini skirt and a tan trench coat. There was something else. Naruto said while trying to remember what it was. He missed the surprised look on Haruzan's face when he described the woman. He couldn't be talking about Anko, could he? Haruzan thought. That's when Naruto snapped his fingers as he remembered. Oh yeah, she likes attention because she does not wear a bra, Naruto said. Definitely talking about Anko, this can be troublesome, 
I do know who you're talking about. Her name is Matara Shianko and is a Takubetsu Jonan, Special High Jonan. May I ask why you wish to speak with her? Haruzan asked. Naruto then explained what he saw and understood why he was searching for her. While Naruto was the number one pariah in Kanoagakure, Anko was number two. It was not her fault, however. It was because of his wayward student, Orochimaru. She used to be his pupil until he betrayed her and left her for dead. She was an outcast because of her association with him. It took her a while to get the respect that she deserved. Haruzan rubbed his chin, wondering what he should do. In the end, he would help him and pray to whatever deity, she does kill him. I will tell you where you can find her. I do ask that you be careful. Haruzan said. Don't worry about it, I'm lovably cute. Why would she hurt me? Naruto asked. Haruzan just sighed and wondered how many deities would help him. Matara Shianko was Kanoa's resident wild child and second in command at the torture and interrogation department. She loved her job, her lifestyle and some dango. She was currently hanging out at her favorite place, training ground 44, A, K, A, the Shino Mori, Forest of Death. As she ate her dango, she felt someone enter her space. She looked down to see a blonde-haired nine-year-old. She instantly recognized him as the Jinchuriki of the QB no Yoko. She was a little curious as to why he was here. She watched as the young blonde looked at her. Hey, are you Matarashi Anko? Naruto asked. Who wants to know? Anko asked. My name is Naruto. I was wondering if you can answer a question of mine. He said. Anko tapped her chin for a moment before facing him. Sorry kid but I don't think so. Anko said. But it's one simple question. It won't take you that long to answer it. Naruto said. Maybe, maybe not but I have better things to do than to answer the question of a snot-nosed little kid. Anko said with a grin. Hey, you don't even know me lady. Who the hell do you think you are? He got his answer when something cut his cheek. Anko vanished and reappeared behind Naruto. The blonde was scared stiff as she licked his blood. He couldn't see her but he could fell the grin on her face. Not so tough now, are you? Just run along kid. Maybe you can look me up when you get a little older. Anko mocked and vanished. After she was gone, Naruto let out a sigh of relief. He couldn't believe how crazy that lady was. Still, she was the only one who could answer his question and if there was one thing about Uzumaki Naruto, he was a very persistent person. This would be something that Anko would learn greatly. Anko yawned and stretched her muscles. She smacked her lips and sat in her bed for a while. Dressed in a large shirt that belonged to someone, she made her way toward her bathroom. Along the way, she discarded the shirt and grabbed a towel that was hanging off the bathroom door. She walked into the bathroom and toward her medicine cabinet. She opened the door to get her toothbrush and paste. She closed the door and was about to brush her teeth when she noticed something in the mirror. She narrowed her eyes to see a grinning blonde, waving at her. She was instantly awake and snapped her head around to see Naruto outside her bathroom window. What the hell? How do you know where I live? Anko asked him. I asked around and some guys told me where I can find you. They seem to know you well. Naruto said with a grin. Anko glared at him. If you haven't noticed, I am not dressed to receive visitors. Anko growled. Please lady, you walk around the village in nothing but mesh and you don't even wear a bra. Don't act like you're not trying to get attention. Naruto scoffed. The statement got him a one-way trip to the ground via Anko's fist. Anko was angrily eating her dango. Everyone at the place was giving her a wide berth considering the angry vibe she was giving off. She couldn't believe the nerve of that kid, calling her easy. Unlike the rumors that were spread around, she was not easy. Yes, she did have partners but they were guys who understood that this was a one and done deal. It wasn't her fault that some of these men were horny scum that were cheating on their women. Her choice of clothes was also something that helped her in her interrogations. They liked what they saw before she showed him the truth. It irked her that some random brat could insult her like that. She swore to Kami that she would sink that kid if she saw him again. Her danger sense was tingling and she could feel him behind her. She whipped around to shout at him when she found no one there. She blinked a few times before sighing. Maybe I'm being paranoid. 
Anko thought as she turned back toward her dango. Boo! Naruto shouted, making Anko cry out and fall down from her seat. Naruto was laughing his ass off as Anko laid on the ground. Oh man, you should have seen your face. He was busy laughing that he didn't see Anko stand. Anko grabbed his head and slammed it onto the counter. Barker! Anko shouted and stormed off. Naruto just rubbed his face and watched the retreating woman. He started after her, determined to get his question answered. Anko was at her wit's end. She was now jumping at shadows and looking behind her. That kid was just relentless in his pursuit. He hounded her for a week and it didn't look like he was going to stop. She had lost him a couple of times only for him to find her later on. What was his deal? She could end it all with metal across his throat but she didn't feel like becoming a missing nim killing the Sandime's surrogate grandson. She just needed to find a way to end this. Yuhi Kuranai looked at her friend with concern. She was wondering why she was looking over her shoulder and why she was so jumpy. Are you okay Anko? Kuranai asked. Yeah, just dandy, I'm just dealing with a rat problem. Anko said. Do you need a place to stay while you deal with it? She asked. No, it's okay Kuranai. I will find a solution and everything will be back to normal. I just need to enjoy my... Anko paused when she noticed that her plate was empty. She stood up quickly. WHO the hell took my dango? She roared. Everyone looked at her before hearing the sound of someone eating. They looked to see Naruto, eating a stick of dango. Not only was he doing that, he was drinking her red bean soup. Hey, this isn't bad. It isn't as good a ramen but it isn't bad. Naruto said. Everyone was shocked at the balls of this kid. Some prayed that he would still have them intact as an evil killer intent fell over the area. Naruto looked at the woman and gulped. He realized that he may have gone a little too far. Anko glared at him with pure rage and malice. You're dead. I'm going to kill you. Anko roared. Naruto dropped everything and ran for his life. Anko was on him, a kunai in her hand. After a few seconds, Kuranai ran after Anko, praying that she would make it in time to stop her friend from committing murder. Let me go, Naruto exclaimed. He was currently hanging upside down on the monument. Below him, a giant snake was coiled and waiting for him. He looked up to see a grinning Anko who was holding the rope. You're crazy lady, you're crazy, I've had enough of you brat. I don't care if I get killed for this but you will no longer bother me and ruin my life. This is the end for you. Anko said with an evil laugh. Hey, if you would have just answered my question, you would have been able to continue on with your life, Naruto shouted. Are you telling me that you have tormented me for a week because of a stupid question? Anko roared. Naruto gulped and Anko released the rope. Naruto plummeted to his death as Anko laughed loudly. Anko was grinning with her eyes closed when she felt someone shake her. She awoke and looked around the room she was in. She recognized it as a hospital room. She saw her friend Kuranai, the Sandami Hockage and Yu. Anko roared and prepared to lunge at Naruto. She was held back by Kuranai and Naruto ducked behind the Hockage. Kuranai was able to restrain her friend and Naruto poked his head from behind the Hockage. That will be enough of that Anko. I'm sorry that Naruto has caused you such trouble and he will apologize for it. Haruzen said. Hey, why do I have to apologize? Exclaimed Naruto. She flipped out and started to chase me with kunai. You ate my lunch. Anko shouted. Well, if you would just answer my question, I wouldn't have done that. You're just being stubborn. Naruto stated with an angry frown. Anko took a few calming breaths before she did something that she would regret. She looked at the boy with a glare. Fine, what's your damn question? Anko asked. How do you deal with it? Naruto asked. Excuse me, how do you deal with all the whispers and glares you get from the villagers? Anko looked at him with surprise. I would usually smile through everything and proclaim that I'm going to take his hat but sometimes it gets to be too much. You seem to deal with it much better than I do. So, what's your secret? He asked. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what to tell you kid. The way I am is just so that they don't mess with me. I don't take stuff from anyone and I let them know that I their words don't bother me. 
It helps that I have some really close friends to talk to. Anko explained. Oh, I think I would just make things worse if I started acting like that and I don't really have any friends. Naruto said with a somber tone. Kuranai and Haruzan looked at him with sadness. He quickly put up his grin on and looked at Anko. Well, thanks for answering my question and I'm sorry if I messed with you too much. It was kind of fun, he said. With a mock salute, he was gone. Anko just watched the door with a somber face. She turned to Kuranai. How did I end up here anyway? Anko asked. You slipped while you were chasing him. He attempted to grab a hold of your coat but you were a little too heavy for him. Don't worry, you only landed on your head. That part is hard as a rock, Kuranai joked. Anko grinned a little but looked back at the door. She was thinking about what the kid asked and it bothered her greatly. Anko didn't why she was doing this. She was finally free of the blonde rat. He wasn't popping up everywhere, she could eat in peace and she could finally relax. So why was she about to do this? It was because of surveillance that she did on Naruto. She watched as he trained and walked around the village. She was very tempted to kill a few villagers over what they did to him. She dealt with one of the grosses who overcharged him. She admitted that he had some potential to be a shinobi but that he was badly undertaught. She also saw that he was very lonely. It was something that she greatly remembered. After a week of watching him, she felt that she needed to do something. It was because of this that she was visiting the Hockage. She entered the office and faced the Hockage. Haruzan looked up at her. He could see the nervousness in her and wondered what was wrong. Is there something I can help you with Anko? Haruzan asked. Yeah, I was hoping that you could give me three months to deal with some personal business. Anko said. Three months is quite a time Anko. What is so important that you would need such time? He asked. Let's just say that I feel obligated to fix this personal issue. Please, I just need those three months. She begged. Haruzan looked at Anko and could see that she needed it. Very well, you have your time off to settle this personal issue that you have. Haruzan said. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You would regret it, sir. Anko said and left. Something told the old cage that he would. Chapter 2 Naruto slept with drool coming down his face. The covers were thrown off him and his sleep jersey was curled up and little. He mumbled the words, Brahman, a couple of times. It was kind of cute to Anko who was standing in his room. After observing him for a while, she decided to get to the reason of her visit. She reared her foot bad and kicked over the bed. G O O D D D D D D D D morning, future student. Anko cheered. Naruto got from under his bed and looked at Anko like she was crazy. What? Naruto said a little sleepy. Anko thrust his alarm clock in his face. It's time to get to work, kid. We have a lot of ground to cover before your return to the academy. Anko explained. What the hell are you talking about? It's five in the damn morning. Naruto shouted. He was now fully awake. I know, the early bird gets the worm. Now, take a shower and get dressed. If you're not outside in 15 minutes, I'll come back inside and drag you out naked and wet, Anko said. She left his room and a very confused Naruto in her wake. Naruto stood in front of Anko with an annoyed look on his face. She just smiled at him. Well, let's get to the reason that I'm here. I was pretty impressed with you the last time we met. You avoided me for a while and that's not an easy feat. So, as a reward, I will be helping you improve so that no one can catch you. You may begin to thank me. Anko said smugly. Why the hell would I, thank you? You're just using that as an excuse to hurt me. Naruto stated. I am hurt that you would think that. Yes, we did not have the best of meetings but I honestly wish to help you. Just think about it. For the whole summer, you get one-on-one -on -one training for a very skilled ninja. You can rub it in your classmates' faces when you show them all up. Anko told him. Naruto actually concerned what she said and was nodding in agreement. He missed the smile on Anko's face. Payback time, you little rat. I'm going to make sure that this will be hell on earth for you and I will enjoy it. Oh yes, I will enjoy it. Anko let loose an evil chuckle. She quickly composed herself and faced him. Okay then, why don't you tell me your skill set? 
Well, I'm awesome in everything. I know two of the Academy Jutsu and my most powerful technique, Oiroke no Jutsu, sexy technique. I am the man who is going to be Hokage, Databio, believe it, Naruto cheered. So, you suck basically. Anko stated. Hey, Naruto exclaimed. Did you think I wouldn't check up on you? That cute Chunin with the scar told me some things about you. What was it that he said? Oh yeah, you're loud, brash and unfocused. You can't do a clone to save your life and you fight like a drunken brawler. As for your powerful technique, that only works on perverts. Anko explained. Naruto knew who she was talking about and made a mental note to deal with Aruka sensei Or, don't pout about it. By the end of the summer, you'll be as good as new. Now, let the torture, I mean, training begin. Naruto watched as she pulled out several shuriken from her coat. Time to run and dodge, Anko exclaimed. Naruto screamed before bolting. Anko was right on his heels, throwing metal at him. Come on kid, three more pull-ups. Come on, feel the burn. Anko said. Damn it, you psycho. Why do you have a bonfire under me? Naruto asked loudly. It's good motivation. She then pulled out a bottle of lighter fluid. Three more pull-ups kid. She said before spraying some more fluid on the fire. Naruto hit the ground with a thud. He struggled to get to his feet and glared at the tree. It was mocking and laughing at him. Well, it wasn't the tree but the person sitting in it. She was happily munching on Dango while he was tired and dirty. Anko looked down from her perch and had to admit that he did a lot better than before. Not bad brat, you got like an inch higher. Let's see how much higher you can get before lunch. Anko commented. I hate you. He spat out. I love you too. Anko said with a grin. Anko kicked the door open to Naruto's apartment. She had the blonde over his shoulder. He was out like a light. It was because of all the training that they had been doing. After teaching him the Kinabori no Shugyo, tree climbing exercise, and lunch, she got into his taijutsu for the rest of the day. She was teaching stance, tactics, and various other things. It ended with a spa that she found very satisfying. She had to give it to him though. There were many in the village that could take such a beating and stand right back up. She entered his room and flipped his bed back on its legs. She dumped the kid on the bed and watched sleep for a while. She had a small smile on her face. While she did torture him a little, he didn't complain much. He just kept going forward and didn't give up. It was a great trait of his. She was positive that he would go far in his career. She closed the door and left the apartment. Naruto hit the ground again and took a deep breath. Naruto looked at the tree and had a cocky grin. He was getting there. He was halfway up the tree now and it wouldn't be long before he conquered this stupid exercise. It had been a week since he became Anko's victim. She was a brutal and crazy woman but she knew what she was doing. He felt stronger and quicker. He could throw straight and he could somewhat properly fight. She still mocked him about his jutsu but he didn't let it get to him. Speaking of his teacher, she was once again sitting on the branch of the tree. She was watching him make his progress with the exercise. So, how am I doing? Naruto asked. What, do you want a cookie every time you improve? If you want to impress me, then get higher. Anko said. Geez, can't you just throw me a bone here? Naruto grumbled. Anko just grinned at him. In truth, she was very impressed with his improvement. It had only been a week but she was sure that his control had improved greatly. She wondered what he had in store for the rest of her time off. Hey kid. What do you think about a little test? Anko asked. Naruto looked up to her with a confused look on his face. Anko's grin did not help ease him. Haruzen was busy dealing with some paperwork when someone interrupted him. He allowed him entry and what he saw was just shocking. Two of his Anbu commanders had their mask redone. They were colored with very bright colors and funny faces. They did not say anything as they knew who the culprit was. Haruzen never understood why Naruto would antagonize the Anbu as they were the elite of the elite. He ordered that Naruto is to be brought to him. As soon as they left, he pulled out his crystal ball. Using his Tongain no Jutsu, telescope technique, he searched for Naruto. He was able to find him with Anko. This confused him greatly and listened into the conversation. So, I did good right? Naruto asked. It wasn't bad but I could have done better. 
Still, for your first infiltration, you did well. Anko said. Just remember what you promised lady. You will show me a jutsu for this. Naruto stated. Oh stop being a little baby. I said that I would teach you a jutsu right? I'll teach you at a later date. However, it is time that you learn another lesson. Anko said. Oh, what's that? He asked. Today's lesson is to never trust anyone. Anko said with a grin. Naruto was confused when Anko grabbed him by the scuff of his jacket. Hey guys, I found the little prankster. She shouted. Naruto looked betrayed and began shouting curses at her. Haruzan stopped his technique and sat back with an amused look. So that's why she need the time off. This could prove to be a little problematic as they are both so alike. If he should pick up some of her bad habits, who knows what will happen. I guess I'll play the wait and see card and watch them from afar. Who knows, this might work out for the both of them. Were the Hokage's thoughts. He went back to his work while awaiting the arrival of Naruto. Naruto had to dodge another lunge from one of Anko's snakes. He growled in frustration as he could not get this stupid genjutsu that Anko was teaching him. She called it the heavy suridoi shizen, snake penetrating stare. It was a technique that she told him that she learned from her master. It was a pretty stupid technique in his opinion as when would he ever run into a snake. After another failure, Naruto stood and glared at Anko. This technique is bogus, he exclaimed. I thought that you were going to tech me something good, Naruto said with a tone. It is a good technique, especially for assassinations. I told you that I would show you a technique so stop complaining. Anko said. Yeah but you said that this technique was from the person who taught you. The guy must have been some kind of weakling if this is the best that he could come with. Naruto complained. Anko chuckled a little as her teacher would have probably killed him for his words. Still, he was disrespecting the technique that she learned from him and in a way he was insulting her. You know, my master was a jonin and part of a famous team. He was definitely not a weakling and I am insulting that you would say that because you're calling me weak as well. Anko said calmly. Well, how come I haven't heard of him? Maybe he wasn't as good as you say. I bet he was that great of a ninja. Naruto mocked. Anko gave him a hard glare. That will be enough of that kid. Anko warned. Besides, aren't you just a Takubetsu Jonan? Like teacher, like student I guess. Naruto found himself lifted off the ground and slammed into a tree. He looked right at Anko and saw the anger in her eyes. He realized that he may have gone a bit too far. I am nothing like him. Don't you dare compare me to the likes of Orochi. Anko caught herself and realized that she lost her cool over that bastard. She dropped Naruto and vanished. Naruto wondered what the hell that was about. Anko just sat at a table in deep thought. She didn't know why she went off like that. She didn't respect that man anymore so what Naruto was saying shouldn't have hurt her so much. Maybe it was because of the last statement she heard him say. It was a comment that many have said about her. She was nothing like him and she busted her ass to show that she wasn't. She figured that she would apologize to him later. Suddenly a plate of dango was placed in front of her. She looked at it and then to the waitress. I didn't order this. Anko said. No, it was that little boy there. The waitress said and pointed. She looked to see Naruto looking at her. Anko just sighed and motioned him to come over. He did and sat across from her. They were silent for a while before Naruto took a deep breath. I'm sorry that I insulted you and your master. I didn't know that it was a sensitive topic. Naruto apologized. It wasn't the fact that you insulted my master Naruto. He was a bastard anyway. I lost my cool and reacted badly. If anyone should be sorry, it should be me. Anko said. If you don't mind, what did he do to you that would make you dislike him so much? Naruto asked. What made you come to that conclusion? Anko asked. You only came at me because I said you were like him or her. He said. You're getting too damn observant. Anko said. She sighed and looked at him. My master isn't seen in such a great light in the village. He abandoned the village and abandoned me. Let's just say I don't like it when people compare me to him. I don't want anything to do with him. She explained. Oh, there was a pause in the conversation until Naruto slapped his fist into his hand. Okay then, you got to teach me this technique and when I meet your former sensei, I'll show him that you're much better than him.
Naruto declared. Anko looked at Naruto with surprise. She then smirked at the boy's decoration. Don't say things that you can't back up. Come on, let's get back to your training. Anko said and grabbed her dango. Naruto followed her and attempted to get her to believe him. She just kept walking but was a little happier for some unknown reason. Okay that is it for today hope y'all enjoyed my first what if see you guys later.